Something extraordinary just happened in space, and hardly anyone's talking about it. China has pulled off a historic first, deploying a three-satellite constellation between Earth and the Moon in a rare orbit called DRO. This isn't just another space milestone, it's a game-changer. We're talking about a stable, low-fuel gateway to the Moon and beyond, built not in theory, but in orbit. In this video, we'll break down how they did it, and what it means for the future of lunar bases, deep space travel. The vast stretch of space between Earth and the Moon, often called cislunar space, has become the new frontier for exploration. But China's move to deploy a satellite constellation there, specifically in the distant retrograde orbit, isn't just about reaching new territory. It's about redefining how we use space as a highway between planets, research labs, and even future colonies. So what makes DRO so special? This orbit is highly stable. Once a spacecraft enters it, it can stay there using very little fuel. That's gold in space terms. No orbit correction burns every few days, no constant monitoring. It's like discovering a gravity-assisted parking spot that stays put for years. China's decision to anchor part of its satellite constellation here opens a doorway to long-term operations between Earth, the Moon, and even deeper targets like Mars. But it's not just fuel efficiency that makes DRO attractive. Its position, looping around the Moon in a way that stays balanced between Earth and lunar gravity, makes it the perfect relay station. Think communication hub, navigation anchor, observation post. Future lunar missions, including those with astronauts or robotic infrastructure, could rely on this orbit to stay connected to Earth or to bounce data between spacecraft. And this isn't a new interest. China began researching DRO applications as far back as 2017. Their vision? A DRO-based spaceport. A literal pit stop for spacecraft moving between celestial bodies. This constellation isn't just a tech demonstration, it's the foundation of an interplanetary network the first building block of something much larger. And this leads us to the boldest part of the mission, not just the orbit, but how they got there. When the DROI and DRB satellites launched in March 2024, things didn't go as planned. A malfunction in the upper stage of the carrier rocket meant both satellites missed their intended path. For many missions, that would have meant failure. But what came next was nothing short of a space rescue drama. Rather than riding off the mission, engineers launched a high-stakes sequence of emergency maneuvers. Picture this, satellites hurtling through space, millions of kilometers off course, with limited fuel, and teams back on Earth trying to reprogram and redirect them in real time. Over the course of 8.5 million kilometers, these satellites were slowly, precisely nudged back on track. It took weeks of calculations and risky burns, but eventually, both satellites reached their intended positions. This wasn't just a recovery. It was a demonstration of China's growing mastery in autonomous space operations. The ability to adapt, course correct, and improvise in deep space is critical, especially for future crewed missions or robotic operations where split-second decisions can't wait for instructions from Earth. But the engineering feats didn't stop there. Once in position, the satellites separated successfully and began forming a constellation. They established inter-satellite links, meaning they could talk to each other across hundreds of thousands of kilometers using K-band microwave communication. Not only that, they established stable contact with the previously launched DROL satellite already orbiting in near-Earth space. Now here's where it gets cooler. Instead of depending on Earth-based ground stations for orbit tracking and positioning, which is time-consuming and expensive, these satellites began tracking each other. Using just three hours of data, they achieved position accuracy levels that normally take two full days of ground tracking. That's not just impressive, it's revolutionary. Imagine replacing ground control rooms with orbiting navigation satellites that can determine positions and guide each other autonomously. For future deep space missions, that could mean faster response times, lower costs, and real-time adaptive navigation. So, from a near failure, China ended up with a working three-satellite system that proved not just orbital mechanics, but resilience, autonomy, and advanced communication. With this constellation now fully operational, China's scientific ambitions in space are ready to accelerate. These satellites aren't just floating beacons, they're packed with instruments to push the boundaries of what's possible in the Earth-Moon region. One of the key focuses is astrophysics. 
Using their position in DRO, the satellites have already begun observing gamma-ray bursts, which are some of the most energetic and mysterious events in the universe. Being far from Earth's atmosphere and electromagnetic interference, these satellites have a clean view of space. It's the perfect lab for studying high-energy cosmic events and testing experimental instruments like space-based atomic clocks. Why atomic clocks? Because in the long term, having extremely precise timing is critical for navigation, quantum communications, and scientific experiments. These trials help lay the groundwork for independent timekeeping systems in space, crucial for when we have lunar bases or missions operating far from Earth. There's more. The constellation is also acting as a data relay and navigation system for future lunar landers and orbiters. Instead of relying solely on Earth's deep space network, a spacecraft around the moon could connect directly to this constellation, receiving high-precision time signals and navigation updates on the fly. That's huge for autonomous exploration and for cutting down mission costs. And perhaps most importantly, this experiment proved that deep space infrastructure doesn't have to be expensive or fuel-intensive. China used just one-fifth the typical fuel to reach DRO. That means you could launch heavier payloads, stay longer, or do more with less. This is how space becomes more accessible, not just to governments, but eventually to private ventures too. The success of this mission represents a strategic shift. No longer is space exploration about planting flags. It's about building networks, satellite constellations, communication relays, navigation systems that turn deep space into a working environment. An environment where science, industry, and human presence can coexist. We're watching the early stages of what could become a cislunar economy, and China just planted the first node. So, what does it all mean? China didn't just launch a few satellites. They demonstrated a vision, a roadmap for how space might work in the coming decades. With a three-satellite constellation anchored between Earth and the Moon, they've shown us what's possible. Low cost, low fuel, high-efficiency infrastructure that supports science, navigation, communication, and autonomy. This isn't the end, it's the beginning. The beginning of a world where spacecraft don't just visit space, they live there. Where lunar missions aren't one-offs, they're part of a system. And where exploration isn't limited by how far we can reach from Earth, but by how well we can build bridges between worlds. If this mission taught us anything, it's that the next leap for humanity may not be a rocket launch, but a connection made millions of kilometers away, in a place where orbits dance, satellites talk, and the future is quietly taking shape. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.